So Warwick gets kind of a bad rap by some people. You know, often the first thing that they think of is airport traffic or traffic on Post Road or Bald Hill Road. And yeah, that's part of what you get in certain areas. But you know what? It's actually a pretty sprawling suburban area with lots of different neighborhoods that are really quite nice. So let's take a look and get to know Warwick. Hi, I'm Jess Powers. I'm a full-time real estate agent and I work all over Rhode Island. And I use this channel to help first-time buyers and sellers and folks like you who might be relocating to our state. Now, I know Rhode Island has a ton of communities to choose from. Now, even if you live here your whole life, you still might not know all of the ins and outs of certain areas. Now, I've got people reaching out to me all the time and I absolutely love it. So send me a text, an email, give me your ring, because I can't help you if I don't hear from you. Now, let's jump in. So Warwick is the Ocean State's third biggest city, following Cranston and Providence. It's kind of centrally located and it's bordered by, we've got Cranston to the north, we've got East Greenwich and Greenwich Cove to the south, then we've got Providence River to the east, and then Warwick and Coventry to the west. It's home to TF Green International Airport. And you know what, actually, if you haven't traveled in a while, you might be kind of surprised by how many destinations you can fly to directly from TF Green even for under hundred bucks. I think our airport is amazing. It's so easy to get to and the ease of getting through security, it's so much better than other airports. All right, so let's start north and then we're gonna head down the coast. So first up is this cute little seaside village, this neighborhood called Patuxent Village. Um, it also happens to be one of my favorites in the whole neighborhoods. It's home to some really great dining spots. There are coffee shops, there are bars, little um, specialty shops and it's right on that Cranston Warwick line. Now, if you love a walkable neighborhood, but you don't wanna live in Providence, then you should definitely check out Patuxet. It's a pretty desirable community. So the real estate market, well, it's pretty hot, especially when inventory is low. Now, if you're close proximity to the village, the home prices, they're gonna start in those mid 400s and kind of the sky's the limits for anything that has, especially if it's got direct waterfront access. The Warwick side, well, that's likely to be a little bit more affordable, especially as you head away from the center of the village. All right, so just south of Patuxet Village is Gatsby Point, which is this private waterfront community. It originally was built as kind of an affordable summer resort, but now for the past decade or so, it's really been occupied year round as a seasonal community. Lots of empty nesters and folks who aren't necessarily looking for a ton of space to call home. It's kind of a tight knit community. They've got some really epic 4th of July parties in the summer, super fun. You actually do have to check in at the gate and you have to have somebody uh, that lives there. You've, you've gotta be on their list. It also has these really great walking trails right along the water. The land there is leased, so it is something to be to note and they do have some association fees. So then just a little bit further south of that, um, next to it is Governor Francis Farms um, and the area south of Gatsby Point. These areas have some larger homes and kind of suburban developments. The home prices range from about 400s to 500s. There are some in the mid 300s um, as you get on the fringe of those neighborhoods, especially if you get closer to the airport. That is important to note that these areas like Patuxet Village or Gatsby Point or Governor Francis, they do have regular flyovers. So if that's a deal breaker for you, you've got to know that that's just part of living there. So Hoxie and Hillside Grove, those are the neighborhoods that directly border the airport. So as the airport has expanded over the years, there are entire tracts of neighborhoods and homes that have been demolished. The homes closest to the airport, those are gonna be a little bit lower priced from the mid 300s. Um, little bit more of a challenge if you buy in that area because it's just not gonna work for everybody. So off Airport Road, you're gonna follow that West Shore Road all the way through Connecticut Village and Long Meadow. Then you're gonna head down to Warwick Neck Ave, south into Warwick Neck, you've got Rocky Point and then Oakland Beach. So Holmes West Shore Road, those are some of Warwick's more affordable coastal areas. They really began to grow in the early 1900s. 
That was when Providence had a trolley line that came through. Why don't we have those anymore? So the trolley lines, they gave residents really easy access to the Warwick shore. It, some I've seen some old photos of the area and it looks really beautiful. So there was Connecticut Point Park, that historic late high, lighthouse is still there. That's still a main attraction. Um, it's a great area for an afternoon picnic. Um, it's important to know that it is not safe to swim in this area, both because the water quality still isn't great, but also because there are some really nasty riptides there. I do love just north of that, there's Coal Farm, which is another one of those, kind of like Gatsby Point, another little seaside community. I spent, uh, my, my in-laws live there, and we spent an, uh, a little afternoon, a fun afternoon, right on the beach over there. I mean, you have beautiful, beautiful views, and it's kind of an area that's completely tucked away. You just wouldn't even know it exists. There's a lot of neighborhoods like that all down West Shore Road. As you're closer to Airport Road and closer to the airport, you know, there's a lot of neighborhoods that shoot off of that road. Some of them are really pretty affordable, um, but again, you're closer to the airport. So you really kind of got away and look at what your budget is, you know, where you want to live. Dave's Supermarket is over there, a great grocery store that's locally owned, um, CVS, Walgreens, Five Guys Deli. So kind of one of those sort of sprawling areas, but again, lots of cute little homes off of that area. All right, so let's continue down. Um, if you're past Connecticut, Shawman Ave is a road that really has amazing, spectacular views of Narragansett Bay. So if you're looking for waterfront property in Rhode Island that's under $900,000, then you should really consider Coastal Warwick. It not, might not necessarily be what people think of in Warwick, but again, there are some spectacularly beautiful areas. Uh, Shawmut is one of my one of my favorite roads to drive down. All right, so if we continue down into that little southeastern peninsula, that's where you're going to find Rocky Point Park. So it is one of Rhode Islanders favorite landmarks. Um, it's right at the top of Warmike Neck. Now it used to be this really amazing amusement park, Rocky Point. Um, it is now a state park. They made it into a state park a couple years ago. They've got uh, a mile and a half walking trail. There's a small beach. There's stunning views. Rocky Point actually, fun fact, it was in operation from the 1840s all the way up until 1995. Now, since I'm not a native Rhode Islander, I've, I've been here for about 20 years, I've only heard stories about this crazy place. So you could look it up online. So now if you head to the tip of Warwick Neck, there are, again, really beautiful, spectacular waterfront homes. They're multi-million dollar properties. Now, the thing about living in this area all the way down into Warwick Neck is it's kind of far away. It kind of feels like you're a little bit in the middle of nowhere. So if you have to work in Providence or you need to get into some other areas, you know, it can take 20 minutes all the way from down in that area to get even through um, up to Post Road. Especially traffic can be really, really bad in that area. So you, you just gotta know kind of what you're getting into. But it's worth a day trip. It's worth walking around and checking things out down there. Okay, so let's keep going. If we head just a few minutes down the road, the next peninsula, that is Oakland Beach. Now here again, it used to be a really thriving community. There was a, an amazing hotel that was there that burned down and then the hurricane of 1938 wiped it out. In the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, those weren't really good years to that area. And it gained a really a pretty bad reputation. However, as the years have gone by, and if homes have been renovated and increased in value, the area has really improved. I've sold a lot of homes in that area and my clients really love it. Now you can still find homes kind of in the mid 200s and up in that area. So a lot of them though, they're really tiny homes. Again, they were just built as summer cottages. Okay, so you can find one of my favorite Rhode Island clam shacks down in Oakland Beach. It's called the Iggy's. Um, you gotta try the clam chowder and you absolutely have to try the clam cakes. That is one of those crazy little weird Rhode Island food things. They also have an amazing lobster roll and it's really easy to find in the summer. All you have to do is look for long lines waiting outside to order those clam cakes and a bowl of chowder. You can actually order online, so that is a smart thing to do. All right, so just beyond Oakland Beach is the Buttonwoods neighborhood of Warwick, and that has some uh, really fantastic public and private amenities. That's where Warwick City Park is, and I gotta say, it's kind of a, it's a really, it's a hidden gem that's got really fantastic walking trails. There is the Sandy Beach, also, there's a dog park that has, uh, it's covered in beach sand and my Huskies actually, they really love it. It's a great spot. And 
Then you'll go to historic Buttonwoods neighborhood. You drive down a long road and it's covered in trees and then all of a sudden you are in this really cool neighborhood, another little hidden gem. They've got amazing features. There's a tennis court for the neighbors, pickleball courts, there's two small beaches, there's this historic casino and this chapel for private events. The homes don't come up in that area very often because, well, nobody wants to leave. Um, it's a neighborhood that people really stay in for a really long time. I just sold a beautiful historic home in the area built in the 1920s for $900,000. Um, so it's a really cool, really neat area. It was actually modeled after a neighborhood in Martha's Vineyard. So again, when they had those trolley lines, that was a destination that people from Providence would travel to. All right, so if you come inland from here, you're gonna find the Oppenog Village. That's where we have City Hall, there's Warwick Museum of Art, there's the Harbor Marina, and then west of that is Bald Hill Road Commercial District. Now that is where you've got Warwick Mall, you've got lots of big box stores and shopping plazas, um, the YMCA, tennis courts, like all of that stuff is in that area. So it is just a strip of all the shops, all the big box stores, everything that you could need. So if you wanna be close to those kind of amenities, then this is gonna be an area that you want. I will say one of my favorite spots is called the Treehouse Tavern, which is over there. They've got um, this amazing outside area, really great brunch, great drinks. Um, it is a unique place to, to visit. Again, I keep, I keep saying hidden gems because I think that people don't realize that Warwick is actually it's really great. There's something for everybody in this in in that city. All right, so south of Appenog Village, that's where you'll find Coesit neighborhood. It's a pretty large neighborhood and that's right on the border of Warwick and East Greenwich. Some of that area was built a very long time ago. You'll have homes from the early 1900s, but then you've got a lot of homes in that neighborhood that were built um, anywhere from the 60s, 70s, and even into the 80s. There is a picturesque harbor that's that's nearby. There's Cello's Waterfront Restaurant. I love to drive down Love Lane. I oh, didn't mean to say that, but I do. I love driving down Love Lane. There are these crazy, huge, sprawling lawns. There are some gorgeous historic homes. This is another neighborhood where people grow up there, they raise their kids there, and everybody knows everybody. Now, homes in that area range from the mid 600s and up. Okay, so then you go through East Greenwich, across the bay, and then you're to an area called Potawatomi. It's an enclave of Warwick, and it shares a zip code with East Greenwich, part of it does, and that really throws people off. So you really gotta make sure that you're working with somebody that knows the difference between these areas, because even though they might have an East Greenwich zip code, it is not in the East Greenwich school district, and for a lot of people, that does actually make a difference. So the home, this area has Goddard State Park. It's a 490 acre state park. Um, it attracts thousands of visitors each year. There's a nine hole golf course. There's a horse barn. I've taken my kids horseback riding there several times. The trails are all shaded, lots of trees, and it's really beautiful. There's also a public beach with a bathhouse. My mom loves to go, when she comes to visit from Missouri, that's her favorite place to go um, looking for sea glass. Families love that beach because it's you know it's very gentle there you know because it's an inlet there aren't big waves there so it's great for little kids there's also a carousel building that people use for functions so the lower Potawatom area prices range in the mid 300s to 400s but then as you get further into the neighborhood um, and certainly if you're along the waterfront community you know the prices are in the 600s and way up um, again, this is another area where if you're looking for waterfront in Rhode Island, some place to consider because, you know, if you're at the at the tip of Potawatomi, you just, God, you've got these gorgeous views and it's just, it's really lovely. Again, another, uh, because it's more of a smaller neighborhood, everybody kind of knows everybody. So that's it. This was kind of a quickish overview um, because there's a lot to know about different areas in Warwick. So, you know, whether you're looking for um, a historic village or you want more of the suburbs or you want a cute little coastal cottage, Warwick truly does have a lot for everybody and it could be the right move for you. Now, if you tell me just three or four of your main priorities and your needs, then I can pinpoint the neighborhoods that will be the right place for you. Now feel free, leave me a nice comment. Um, let me know some of your favorite spots in Warwick. And then as always, I'm always here to help.